Hello friends and welcome to this time of worship for this first Sunday in the new year. Can I wish each of you and all those whom you love and care for every blessing for 2022. My name is Karen Harbison and the Minister at Westburn Parish Church in Greenock and I thank you for once again allowing me to come into your home to share this time of worship. And so on this first Sunday of the new year, a time when the Christmas trees and Christmas decorations are still up, but the first page of the calendar has been turned. We come together to worship God and we read from John's Gospel in chapter 1. Christ, the child born in Bethlehem, is present with us, the light of the world, the Word made flesh. So let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. God of creation, you breathed life into the void and the world was born out of nothing. You kept your promise. Living God, your voice whispered love and the word came to life and was everything. You kept your promise. Spirit God, you move among us in our ordinariness and our lives become extraordinary. You keep your promise and you hold us within it each new day, each new year. Today, gracious God, we praise you that darkness has given way to light, that prophecy has led to truth, that waiting has made room for arriving. We praise you that the silence has been filled with good news, that fear has been overcome with joy, that death has been defeated by life. We praise you that the old has moved over for the new, the past has given way to the future, and that you are in the midst of it and in the midst of us. We praise you that you have been faithful to us in all our ups and downs. At those times when we have doubted your presence and failed to notice you, when we have blindly followed our own path and failed to see you, when we have condemned and criticised others and failed to acknowledge that you are among them, when we have not loved you as you have loved us, we leave behind us a trail of broken promises, Lord, rough and ragged, used and useless. Yet there you are, coming behind us to pick them up, and in spite of us, you make something out of them. For your grace never wanes with the new year's first moon. Your love never falters when the world hesitates. Your compassion never runs out as time slips through our hands. You keep your promise, and we are your forgiven people once again. May we leave this time together, O oh God, knowing that our story has begun anew here and now, and that you wait for us, ready to shape the future and us, that we might share your goodness, show your kindness, and work for your justice, that all everywhere might hear your promise and come to know your peace. And hear us as we pray together in Jesus' words and way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, at the beginning of this new year, we turn to John's Gospel to hear his words about the coming of the Christ child. John's telling is very different from the narrative, the storytelling of both Luke's and Matthew's Gospels. John's version is poetic, full of imagery, which brings the concept of the word, of God's creativity, of God's three in one person, right into a particular time and place. 
and also into our and every time and place. The concept of the divine word would have been familiar to John's original readers, members of a Greek-speaking Christian community somewhere in Asia Minor, around the late 1st or early 2nd century. And the words, the poetry, have become familiar to us too. We know the flow and the rhythm of the words. We hear or read them every year at this time. For many, a watch night service would not be complete without them. But like those who first heard them, perhaps we have to be open, to be surprised, to be awestruck by them. For the word became and becomes flesh and dwells among us. So let us hear the word of God from John's Gospel at chapter 1. The word was in the world and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the father's only son. Amen and thanks be to God for this, his word to us. I wonder if you got a book among your Christmas gifts. If you did, what kind of book is it? A novel, a biography, a poetry book, a recipe book, a funny book, or perhaps even a Christmas annual? We got lots of books as gifts in our house and also gave a lot of books as gifts. Books are full of words and sometimes pictures too. So think about what you have read this past week, which words you have read from your Bible, the papers, books, news online, social media posts. What, what words have you read this week? Which of those words have struck a particular chord with you? Have any of those words revealed something of God's presence to you. Life is full of words, the words of others and our own words. John talks about the divine word, God's way, God's love, God's grace, God's story, God's light, all that God was and did and is and is doing, being revealed, being revealed in a tiny human baby. God's word, God's way, God's love, God's grace, God's story, God's light became flesh and lived among us. One of us, one with us, one for us. So I'd like this morning to read to you a couple of different versions of verse 14 of the first chapter of John's Gospel to really let those well-known words sink in and for us to ponder what they mean for us. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word became a human being, and lived here with us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From him all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory the glory of the Father's one and only Son. 
the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighbourhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. God's word, God's way, God's love, God's grace, God's story, God's light became flesh and lived among us. God in the Christ child, curies in beside us, so close, so real, so much part of us and one with us. We should be open, surprised, awestruck. And as we enter this new year, we give thanks for what this means for us, that in all our fears, all our anxieties, all our hopes, all our possibilities, all our grief, all our happiness, all our questions, all our pondering. God is right here with us and calling us to be light and love and grace, to be and to tell God's stories in ways big and small through all the days of 2022. So let us pray. Oh God, we are glad, some of us, that Christmas is past. Others can't wait for it to come again. But whatever it has left behind, may it not just be the wrapping paper and the cards, the memories of happy times spent together or alone, difficult times spent likewise with other people or on our own. Though the crib scenes will soon be packed away for another year, and the baby Jesus put back into his box. May we take with us into the new year the deep truth that the stories and carols were meant to reveal, that we are not alone, for you are with us. The Eternal One has become mortal. The potter has a body of clay. The storyteller has written herself into the plot. The director has a bit part in the film. The word has become flesh and lives among us. In the light of this incredible claim, we offer prayer to you, the God in our midst, for all who feel alone and who desperately need someone to walk alongside them. May we find that someone if the loneliness is ours and may we be companions to each other. You came into the world that you had made O oh God, and the world did not know you. We pray for any in our world today who are not recognised for who they are, those whose talents have not been nurtured, whose smile has not been returned, those whose face does not fit or whose colour does not blend in with those around them, those who are treated for any reason as anything less than a beloved child of God. You came to your own people and even they would not accept you. We pray for those for whom Christmas and New Year are not the happy family time that the media and too often our churches tell us that they should be. Those who were on their own and longed for company. Those who were lonely in a crowded room. May they know that you were with them, still are and always will be. God, you came in Jesus as life-giving word and as light for the world's darkness. May we who dare to call ourselves Christians speak with his words of grace and shine out with his light of love. Amen. So go now into all the new days of this new year with the love, grace and hope of God who has come and curried in beside us. Go and may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today, this new year and always. Amen.